Hi, I'm Carl, and in this video we're going to have a look at questions 87 to 89 of section 3 of the pink booklet. So this is a question about radio transmission, and we're told that there's this bubble that's formed as signals are radiated out from the Earth. And we're given these two figures, one for light year and one for the speed of light, and we'll come back to those in a minute. 87 says, which of the following is closest to the diameter of the radio bubble? So I've drawn a, a bit of a diagram here, and we can assume that this point in the centre is just going to be the centre of the Earth, and then the radius that we've described here is a distance that the signal has travelled in that 100 years. We've been asked about diameter though, so we need to remember that diameter is going to be twice the radius. Okay, so we've been told the distance that is travelled in one year. So the distance travelled in 100 years is just going to be that multiplied by 100. So 1 times 10 to the 16 multiplied by 100. And that gives us a value of 1 times 10 to the 18. And again, we have to remember that we have to multiply it by 2. So that gives us 2 times 10 to the 18 for the value of the, the diameter of this radio bubble. And that gives us then an answer of B for question 87. So then we're told that for extraterrestrial life to pick up these signals, it'd be really difficult because they lose intensity at a rate inversely proportional to some factor of the radius here. So how do we work this out? Well, there's an equation for intensity, which is intensity equals power over area. It makes sense, but power, what's power in this sense? So that's going to be the energy um, of the signals. So we're told, for example, that television broadcasts are of greater energy than the radio broadcasts. So we can really just call that energy over area. We can simplify this a little bit and say that intensity is going to be equal to, or even, sorry, proportional to one over area. So then if we relate area to the radius, we can say intensity is going to be proportional to one over the radius squared. And that gives us an answer. Um, we're told that these signals lose intensity at a rate inversely proportional to the radius of the radio bubble squared. And that gives us an answer of C for question 88. Finally, we've got question 89, and this one's a little bit more complicated, but it's quite similar to question 88. We're told that there's two signals, P and Q, and they're of the same frequency, and there's this minimum intensity at which these signals can be detected. The only catch is that Q has 100 times as much energy as P. So imagine there's this minimum intensity, and we'll call it I. Um, how can we define this? Well, we know that I is going to be energy, over area. And we can even simplify this a little bit to say i is going to be proportional to energy over r squared. So let's define two different things. Um, r q is going to be the radius of q and r p is going to be the radius of p. So they both have this minimum intensity. Um, so that's going to be the same for both of them. So I'll write that in the middle. And we can say that's going to be um, equal to, and let's just do P and Q on both sides. So if we do P on this side and Q on this side, we can see the intensity is going to be, and I'll write proportional just to be even as correct as I can be. So for P, we've got an energy of 1 relative to Q, and then we have a radius of RP. And on Q side, we've got 100. I'm sorry, this can be R, RP squared, and this can be 100 over RQ squared. So we can get rid of the middleman here, and we can see that we've got 1 over RP squared is going to be proportional to 1 over RQ squared. So then what we could do, just to make this even easier, we could say RP squared is going to be proportional to RQ squared over 100. If we multiply both sides by 100, we get 100 rp squared is going to be proportional to rq squared and then we can just take the square root of both sides and this is going to turn into a 10 and this is going to be rp proportional to rq so from this we can see that rq is going to be 10 times rp so the distance that it can travel is going to be 10 times as far as p and that gives us an answer then of b for question 89 so that was uh,